We're looking at estimating probabilities, and this is one of the most important parts of all of this probability stuff. Like, we want to understand a situation and then use that understanding to forecast and say, I think this is going to happen. I can plan for this because I have a sense of what the future should bring. So here's a situation where they've done some um, analysis of families and how many female children are in each of these families. Okay? So we have a frequency breakdown here. Okay? Now in order to work out probabilities from this, what we need to do is take each of these and turn them into a fraction, which divides by your total sample space. Now in this case, we can add up all of these to get a total. Has anyone already done that and worked out how many there is if you add up all of those? Go ahead, punch it in. 143 is what I got as well. Okay, very good. So what we are calculating, just to sort of refresh your memory from um, the past few years of thinking about this probability, what we're now going to do is relative frequency. right? So how frequently do these occur relative to all the other things that are existing in this situation? Relative frequency. And another name for that in this context is what we call experimental probability. It's not theoretical. It's not like what should happen. It's like we did an experiment. This is what actually happened. So if you want to write that down, just as a bit of a hook for you, experimental probability is another name for this same idea. Okay? So there's a couple of things I want to draw out here. Right? The first one is, just to do this calculation from the start, we just take our frequency divide by how many people there are there, right? So in each case it's going to be this number, like 15, divided by 143, that's how many people are there, yeah? Then it's going to be this number, 55, divided by the same 143, okay? We'll go all the way down, and this is what we get. Now you'll notice me leaving a bit of space over there on the right hand side of that cell. The reason why is that often we will state these probabilities, we'll state these relative frequencies in some kind of decimal or percentage form, okay? which requires us to round off. Now rounding off is usually fine, but sometimes at particular spots you have to be careful. For instance, go ahead and um, if you're in a, okay, we've got a row of four here, row of four, I'm going to make you guys, uh, you guys can work out two each and then I'll make you guys sort of a group of four slash five. I need you to each calculate one of these, right? I want you to calculate what these are and I need you to get the whole calculator display there. So that's why I'm getting you to get different numbers so that you don't have to um, round it off in your head or anything like that. So, you know, work out who's calculating what, 15 over 143, 55 over 143 and so on, right? Now, so, so just hit equals, I just want the number there for a second, okay? Now, you don't need to write this down, but I am going to ask you guys to help me um, note this. Who worked out 15 on 143? Who worked it out? Okay, good. Can you just give it to me to one decimal place? 0. 0.1. Okay, you don't need to write this down. I'm just going to take note of it. Who did 55 over 143? What did you get? 0. 0.4? 0. 0. 62 over 143? Who worked it out? <laughs> no one worked it. It's 0. 0.4 as well. That's fine. That's okay. And... Um, who got the last one? 11 on 143. Also 0 0.1. Now, just have a look at this with me, okay? When you add up, in a discrete random variable, when you add up all of your probabilities, what are you supposed to get? One, right? Now, if you have a look at this, hopefully it doesn't, like you don't need to do your calculator, that adds up to one, right? So far, so good. But watch this. This is where I want you to be very careful, right? And I picked this very deliberately. This time I do want you to write down not one, not two. I need you to write down, have I got it here? No, I do want, hold on, make sure I get the right number. Yeah, three, three decimal places. Can you write down these numbers, not to one or two decimal places, but to exactly three, okay? Can someone tell me what the first one is? 0 0.1, 104, 105, 105. I want three decimal places. Okay, next one, 0 0.1. 385? 385? Yep, do we agree? Next one? 0. 434. Are we sure on the rounding on that one? 434. Someone else want to verify as well? Thanks, Tavar. And last one? 11 and 143. 0.077. Okay, very good. Now, this time we're all going to do the same calculation, and you're delighted, right? These ones here with three decimal places, can you add these ones up? 0 0.105, 0 0.385, 0 0.434, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 
0.077. What does that add up to? No, it doesn't. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> what I calculated beforehand was 1.001, right? Now, we knew what it was supposed to add up to, right? And in fact, rounding doesn't automatically cause problems, right? Sometimes you, it's, it's fine. And in fact, if I checked this before, when you do two decimal places, also fine. You do four decimal places, also fine. It just kind of depends on where it is that you cut off the decimal. So you do have to be really careful with this. Fractions are precise. Can you see this 143? That's why our fractions are really gross and kind of difficult to write in decimal form. So the fractions are going to be exact, but often you will have this issue, so just watch out for it, okay? There's the first thing. The second thing is, I wanted us to compare this to theoretical probability, right? So what should we actually expect to happen? If this is what you know, did happen, what would it be if we had boys and girls being equal chance? Okay? Now for this situation here, I'm just going to make an assumption, which is completely unfair, but we want to simplify this a little bit. Let's assume all these families had three children. Okay? What would we expect if we just kind of guessed, did calculations, didn't do any experiment, what would we expect each of the probabilities to be? How would we even go about answering such a question? Think back. We've talked about like a good three, four, or five tools that we had for thinking about different situations and how to calculate probabilities on them. We talked about lists. We talked about arrays. We talked about tables. Which tool do you think might be most helpful when we're thinking about three children that are either a boy and a girl. A tree diagram is definitely going to be the most helpful. Okay? Now if we just really rough and dirty over here on the side here, we've got a little bit of space, we're doing three children so we're going to need three sets of branches. right? So we're going to have something like this. Yeah? I think I'll just fit. Okay? So each time, boy girl, boy girl, can you go ahead, can you draw this with me? Boy girl. Okay. Now, this does show me the situation, but in fact, what I'm really interested in is what's the total number of female children at the end of it, after all three children have been born. So, when you have a look at the top, how many female children have been born on this particular series of events? That's the zero, right? So zero female. Next one down. One. Next one down. Look carefully. It's, it's one right there. Next one. Two. Next one. Girl, boy, boy. It's one. This one here. Two. Next one. Two. Next one. Okay, very good. Now, if we can assume, which is pretty close, not exactly, but if we can assume that boys and girls are equally likely, right? What should the probability of each of these ones on the end be if they're all equally likely? How many, how many, what's the size of the sample space? How many events are there? Eight. Eight, and we're assuming they're all equally likely. So it's one over eight, one over eight, one over eight. Do you agree? Right? Another way you could calculate that is a half times a half times a half still give you 1 over 8. Right? But notice that we're sort of skewed. right? Like what's the chance that there's zero female? There's only one way you can get that. right? But when we think about how many chances are there of there being one female child, there's many of them. right? How many? Three ways. Three ways that I can get a single female child. So those three... Uh, up like that become 3 out of 8 for a single female child. What about ways of getting 2? Yep, I need, um, I need another colour here. So again, it's 3 out of 8. And then the last one, chance of getting 3, it's just 1 out of 8, right? And we can know we did it right because if you go ahead and you calculate, it's all adding up to 1. So how does that compare to what actually happened? Have a look. Where's my um, eraser? How does that compare to our actual probabilities? Are they within a reasonable range? Maybe it'll help us to get these in decimal form so we can compare them. Does anyone know what an eighth is in decimal? 0. 0.125? 0. 0.375? 0. 0.375? 0. 0.125? Does it fit within what we actually expected? 
It's pretty reasonable, right? It's, um, it's not far off. So I'm pretty happy with our experiment mostly matching reality. So now, oh yeah, question. How much would reasonable be in an exam? What do you mean? Like, you know, how we've gone around. Oh, I see. Okay, like, well, if, if I wanted an answer for that, I would have to give you some specific sort of like parameters for that because may, maybe actually if you had an actual demographer and they were answering that, they'd say, that's crazy. Like this is really shows this is a weird population or something like that. I don't have actual specific information and a question would have to provide that to you because we don't expect you're all experts on analyzing populations and that kind of thing. So we can leave that to one side if that's okay. Now, here's my last question, right? How can we use this to, right at the top there, Estimate the probability of something happening. For instance, if we had, say, 2,000 families, 2,000 families, like, well, I mean, not every, there's lots of siblings in Cherrybrook Technology High School, but let's just call it 2,000, right? How many of them would you expect off of this to have no girls in the family? If you had 2,000. Now, if we use this theoretical probability, we'd get a number, but we have the experiment. Right, we have the experiment. So you would take this relative frequency. Yeah, question? That's only for females. Yes, that's true. That's true. So this data is female centric, but that's fine. Every data is sort of centered on some particular aspect, and that's okay. I'm going to take this number, 15 out of 143, and how does that connect to the 2000? I multiply, yeah? Multiply that by 2000. Can someone tell me what we get? I'm guessing 200 and, yeah, 209. I was guessing 210, but I was rounding off in my head, right? So we expect that number of families on the basis of our experiment to be able to have this number. And this is hugely important. It's hugely important for like family planning, for like have a look at, um, you know, how many people have taken the metro? How many people have taken the metro? Yeah, most, mo no, less, really? Come on, people, we live in Cherrybrook, right? They had to work out the size of that car park. How do you think they did that? They were <laughs> they're, they're, I, was, I walked into that one. They were using the probabilities of who, how many people are taking public transport and so on. So this is what exercise 6A and 8A and 8B go into further. Okay?